copper is showing three relatively big green candles. Have we seen some sort of a cycle low? Let's have a look at the details. Welcome to my finance teacher. And looking at copper cycles or cycles in any other asset, you want to first start with the way that you try to identify cycles. There are cycles in most assets. And looking at copper specifically, cycles usually manifest themselves with the price breaking above the 50 day moving average in the rallying phase of the cycle. That's the first part of the cycle. And in the second part of the cycle or the declining phase, the price usually breaks below the 50 day moving average. That's one of the signs, but there is a bit of a nuance here. When the 50 day moving average, the blue line on the screen is relatively steep, the price might only test the 50 day moving average rather than breaking below it for cycle lows or breaking significantly above it for cycle tops. Another sign to identify cycles that we'll look at with the members at myfinanceteacher.org is this 14 day RSI. With every cycle, RSI also cycles. After all, it's an oscillator, it oscillates, it cycles from overbought to oversold. And in fact, in many cases, RSI doesn't actually go far into overbought or into oversold at cycle tops and cycle lows. So the way that we'll look at this sign is that with every cycle rally, RSI breaks above the neutral level of 50 and rises by at least 20 points and most often by significantly more than that. And conversely, down into the cycle lows during the declining phase of the cycle, RSI drops down below the neutral level of 50 and drops by at least 20 points and usually by significantly more than that. So these are a couple of signs among several that we'll look at, again, with the members at myfinanceteacher.org. And using these signs, at least over the history since uh, mid-2017, we've noticed that copper cycles on average last for around four and a half months. But they can be quite tricky as the duration ranges as well, anywhere from uh, 59 days at the shortest since the middle of 2017 to 198 days at the longest. Now let's zoom in a little bit to see what's uh, going on right now. The previous cycle was relatively short and usually one or a couple or perhaps three relatively short cycles are followed by a longer cycle which uh, usually smooths out this duration back towards that average duration of around four and a half months. So we are now in a relatively longer cycle and there is a chance that cycle finished over here on the 27th of September, lasting for 152 days. That's already slightly longer than the average duration. Looking for our signs, RSI has dropped down below the neutral level from overbought, where it was above 77, all the way down to the recent low around 41. So the drop is significantly more than 20 points on RSI. And the price uh, has retraced down to the 50-day moving average. Yes, it dipped below the 50-day moving average, but it recovered a couple of days later. So we don't see a sustained suppression of price below that 50-day moving average, which usually indicates some sort of a cycle low. So the next question here is whether this 50-day uh, moving average is steep enough to have a cycle low simply retest the 50 day moving average without staying below it for a considerable amount of time, for at least a week. We also do like looking at Bollinger Bands. We see a couple of pokes below Bollinger Bands, but the Bollinger Bands are not really wide. It's usually multiple pokes outside of relatively wide Bollinger Bands that often indicate some sort of a reversal in momentum. So the question is still open whether the 27th of February was a cycle low for copper or not. So I see a couple of scenarios for copper with both having perhaps around a 50-50 chance. One scenario is where we have seen the cycle low and copper will generally continue trending higher, of course, with some retracements, let's say retracing this 50-day moving average before continuing higher in an ongoing new rallying phase of a new cycle. Alternatively, we haven't seen the low yet. And as the cycle is already above 150 days, in the scenario where we are still going to see a cycle low in the near future, we're probably not going to have to wait for long before a lower low under um, $3.9 on copper. And a bit of a confluence, a bit of a congestion of support zones over here are based on the August 2022 high as well as the January this year low and 
the 200 day moving average around uh, 3.8 to $3.7. That might actually agree with uh, what's going on in the general stock market as uh, sometimes, but not always, we do see copper kind of uh, correlating positively with the movements in the general stock market. And my outlook for the general stock market, perhaps we'll talk about the details in an upcoming video, so stay tuned. But in a sentence, I am positive on the general stock market in a very short term, perhaps going over the next uh, couple of weeks. Beyond that, in the intermediate term, over the next uh, couple of months, I do expect a bit of a correction down into the intermediate cycle low in the general stock market. And if that takes place as I expect, if the intermediate correction is um, somewhat scary, this second scenario in copper might actually play out retesting the 200 day moving average. That's when I'll try to accumulate for an upcoming rally into a new cycle. But as there is a 50% chance that we've already seen a cycle low at the end of February, as the model portfolio at myfinanceteacher.org shows, yesterday I started with a bit of a starter position in copper. I'm looking at COPEX specifically. But again, it's only a starter position just to get the foot in the door. There is still a pretty good chance that the cycle low is still ahead of us. Next, looking at market sentiment, this is Copper Optimism Index. It's uh, quite tricky. Throughout the longer duration of a couple of years and longer, this optimism index, this market sentiment on copper fluctuates quite a lot. Even the cycle lows do come at, at a completely different levels. Clearly, when this optimism index comes all the way down to this green line, that's generally a good buying opportunity, especially if it drops uh, far below that green line as it happened during this pandemic drop in early 2020. But it doesn't happen with every cycle low in copper. For example, all through uh, the second half of 2020, these cycle lows came with the optimism index bottoming out around low 50s, high 50s, sometimes even low 60s. So looking at uh, what's happening right now with the optimism index declining from high 50s down into high 40s, there is again perhaps a 50% chance that we've seen a cycle low. But this optimism index is um, not really low enough. We haven't even reached the level of 40 to be certain of that uh, cycle low. So again, there is still a 50% chance that the uh, copper price might still take one more leg lower. But if that is the case, we probably don't have to wait for too long for that to take place, perhaps over the next couple of weeks or a month. Looking at uh, seasonality for copper, it sort of favors this uh, second scenario where copper is still about to make one more leg lower. We see that copper usually does drop all the way down into late March, early April. However, if you remove the 2020, that's the March 2020 pandemic drop when everything just dropped out of bed, we see that the decline down into late March, early April isn't as significant. But uh, there still usually is some sort of a decline into early April. So perhaps over the next month, as the general stock market cools down into the intermediate cycle low, we might see a better buying opportunity on copper. And as I mentioned, I uh, do look at COPEX at the moment with a small tiny start position yesterday. So looking at COPEX optimism index, it is quite volatile. You see it jumps from the green line all the way up to the red line and back pretty quickly. So I also like to look at this green line. It's, it's hard to see on the screen. This green solid line is the 10 day moving average of this optimism index. Usually cycle lows do come with this 10 DMA of the optics somewhere around 40. Although sometimes uh, this uh, green line does drop all the way down to 20 as during the pandemic drop and in the second half of 2020 when copper dropped significantly from $5 all the way down to $3. And in more recent history over the last several weeks, this optimism on COPEX, that's copper miners, has declined from above the red line, from excessively optimistic, down to the green line and bounced over the last few days. And the 10 DMA of this optics, the green solid line has also declined from high 70s all the way down to uh, slightly below 40. So again, there is a pretty good chance that we've seen a cycle low several days ago. So at least a starter position with enough cash on the sideline is arguably not the worst idea. 
And lastly, looking at seasonality for copper miners, again, usually they do drop down into March. So there is still that scenario with one more leg down in copper and the miners. But again, if you remove that 2020, when everything dropped in March, we would still expect a bit of a correction into a mid to late March, but without the 2020 in place, the correction isn't as significant. Again, perhaps retesting that 200 DMA on copper, that's copper over here, and on COPEX, well, perhaps uh, retesting the 200 DMA as well. By the way, at current prices, copper miners pay around 2.7% under 3% in dividend yield as well. That's uh, perhaps uh, something uh, somewhat interesting as well. By the way, do you consider dividends in your investing strategy or do you mostly rely on price appreciation? Let me know down in the comments below. While you are there, remember to hit the like button and share this video with your friends. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.